you are going to be visualising in your head and creating 3D shapes like this one from some drawings. The idea of the visualising the 3D shapes from drawings is an opportunity for the children to practically make the shapes um, after they've visualised them. It's just a very different way of doing it. Now on the board I've got three different 3D shapes and I would like you to see if you can work out what shape I have made. Which one does it match with? I think it's that one because if you can, there's eight edges. Okay, and how many edges has that one got? Okay, can you tell me what you mean by edges? Can you show me? One, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right. How do you know then it's not that shape? Because if you count that, yeah. there's only six. Okay, so if you look at this picture here, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, six edges. And so it couldn't possibly be that one. No, at the bottom, it's not a square, it's like Absolutely. a yeah. So if you look at that picture, you can What we're looking for is the children's ability to visualise those shapes from the drawings, work collaboratively, and to be able to describe the shapes using the correct vocabulary. Why can it not be this shape here? Gemma, why do you think it's not that shape? Because of that, um, that one has um, rectangles and your one don't have any rectangles. You're absolutely right, well done. On your tables, you've got some straws, some Play-Doh modelling clay and some scissors and some pictures of 3D shapes. You can create the shape however you want to. Off you go then, please. At their tables, they need some sort of clay, modelling clay, plasticine, and some straws, some scissors, possibly some mats to roll out their play dough onto or their clay. Also, on the table are some drawings of 3D shapes. The children then use these and the materials to create their 3D shape. If you're systematic and you start with the base first, that will probably help you. Then go upwards and do the top finally, okay? So try and be systematic, that way you'll be able to count them more easily. The children need to make sure when they're creating their shape that they have a base. If they use the Play-Doh or the clay at all in their shape, what they need to do is roll it into small balls, that way it's a bit sturdier. If they actually cut the straws into smaller lengths, it means that they can handle it more easily and it's less likely to topple over. Why is it easy to make a cube? What about a cube makes it easy? Um, it's just like straight sides. Okay. And are these going to be the same length or different lengths? Um, same length. Okay, so straight away you know that you just need to get enough straws that are the same length, yeah? yeah. Brilliant. I'm going to make a sphere because I think it'll be easier to make because all you have to do is roll a bit of clay into a ball. At this point they really need to be thinking very carefully about the vocabulary they're using and certainly should be discussing it with the person next to them. This is why because this one needs to be a little bit bigger. Has this shape got any vertices at all? How many vertices has it got? What do we call it when it's just one on its own? Vertex. Vertex, well done, fantastic. I'd be going around listening for and asking questions about the number of faces, vertices and edges. Hey. The fun doesn't have to end there. For the plenary, rather than just stopping and reviewing the learning so far, the children are hiding each of their shapes behind a whiteboard and describing it to a partner who hasn't seen it before. Emma has got a shape hidden under that pyramid there. She, in a minute, is going to reveal the shape and she has to describe to Matthias the properties, thinking about faces, edges and vertices. You're not allowed to say the name of the shape and Matthias, without looking, you have to try and work out what shape it is. OK, Emma, off you go. It has two faces, three faces. It has two edges. Is it a cylinder? Shall we have a look? Yeah, well done, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Well done. That way, they get to review what they have been learning 
and try and use the language that we've been talking about throughout the lesson. My shape has got six phases. Good. You can change this activity. You could have different shapes, variety, could be easier or harder, like prisms and polyhedrons. Or what you could do is you could actually not have the drawings at all and the children just need to visualise the shapes from their memory. Is it a cube? Well... But yeah, it's one that's fallen apart. Well done. Who can tell me what kind of shape this is? A shape hunt is where we give the children the opportunity to look for shapes in the natural environment. It's a square. How many sides does a square have? Maggie? Four. Four, good girl. Can you tell me, is a square a 2D shape or a 3D shape? Taya? 2D. 2D, good. A good way to start the lesson is to just recap 2D and 3D shapes. Who can tell me? What this shape is Looking at the properties, how many sides, how many corners that those shapes have. So when we take the children out, they're looking for shapes in the natural environment. How many cylinders can you see? No. Surrounded by the natural environment, the children become aware of maths everywhere. Apples. Big apples. Apples. Stones become spheres, sticks become cylinders. Okay, I suppose it's more of a star shape, isn't it? Okay, what shape have we got here? Rectangle. Rectangle. Are you sure? Is it a 2D object or a 3D object? 3D. At Roxham, we're really lucky because we've got a Jeep outside. So we can use that and the children can look for different shapes um, on the Jeep. Where can you see a circle? The children are outside, they're active, they're engaged and they're motivated by being outside. What about on the gazebos? Can you see any triangles on the gazebos? In early key stage one, it's important that the children know about the properties of the shapes, in particular how many sides they have, how many corners. What about the goal? Take the whole goal as a shape. Can anyone remember? It's a 3D shape. It's a prism. Good boy. It was a prism, wasn't it? It's not practical to take the whole class out to do the shape hunt all at once. So back in the classroom, it's important to have a range of activities that the other children can take part in. The activities in the classroom all focus the children on looking at shapes that they're going to find outside. What shapes can you see on the bike? Can you point to a shape and tell me what it is? You don't have to have a motorcycle or sidecar or a Jeep. You can use climbing frames that you've got at school or other objects that you might have, swings for instance. Um, that you've got out on the playground. Look, there's triangles. Can you see them? The children really love using the motorcycle and the sidecar because they can clamber all over it, they can play on it, and they can actually look and touch the shapes that are there in front of them. At the end of a lesson, it's good to do a shape sorting activity to see how much the children have learnt. Look at the shapes that we've got here, and I want you to think about how we could sort them, what different shapes what different groups we could sort them into. What I want you to do is turn to the person next to you and talk to them about how many different ways you could group those shapes. I'm going to give you one minute. Off you go. One group with points and one without points. Yeah, I know. One, one group with, with rounds no. one group without points and one group with points. No. Allowing children to touch and experience shapes connects children to maths in the real world. This morning we're learning to create 2D shapes. And what I'm looking for is for you to describe the properties of the shapes, which you can do with your partners. So I'd really like to hear you use the language and the vocabulary of the shapes and to carefully consider all the clues before you make your shapes. Elastic shapes is a way of helping children identify the properties of 2D shapes using elastic bands and larger pieces of elastic. Now to start with, you'll be making shapes with elastic bands 
and then we're going to progress on to making big shapes using us as sides and corners uh, using large pieces of elastic. It's always a good idea to give the children an elastic band first of all and just let them explore the different shapes that they can make with it. It's helpful to suggest the shape to the children and see if they can make the shape that you request. You may find the children first try to make a triangle and a square. It's always good to encourage the children to turn a square into a rectangle and possibly even a parallelogram. And I think you've got a parallelogram there. Fantastic. Well done, Sophia. Can you have a go at making an isosceles triangle? So you need two sides that are the same length. I find it's a good idea to reflect on the vocabulary of 2D shapes, the properties and the shape names. And there's a special name for a triangle when all the sides are the same length. They are equilateral. E Excellent, well done. An equilateral triangle. So have a go at making an equilateral triangle. Once children are confident about their shapes, they are ready for a bit more of a challenge. What could you do to change that into an irregular? How could you do that? You could do that. And what shape have you made now? What shape, Hannah, is Sharifa made now? Um, if you, a if rectangle. you put it down. Yeah, your rectangle, well done. I'd like you to make an isosceles triangle. In pairs, one has to ask the other to make a shape. This is really enjoyable and encourages lots of discussion between the two about the properties of shapes. If one of the children is unsure about the shape they are to make, the other partner can reinforce and help. Want some help? This is good to help the children become focused on the activity and to help them visualise 2D shapes in their minds. Seven. Seven. Can you now then make a circle for me, please? It's good for children to explore shapes that don't have any corners, such as a circle. They'll realise that if they just leave the elastic band on the desk, it will make a circle. It has one side and no corners. OK, fantastic. Right, I wonder if you guys can make me a square, please. So I don't know if we'll need all of you. We might need some of you. See if you can make me a square. Fantastic. Oh, is that a square? Making a large space in the classroom and having the children work in larger groups with long pieces of elastic enables them to make more shapes on a larger scale. That's fine. I give the group long pieces of elastic and they have to use their bodies to make shapes. Forward, 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 stop. OK, that looks more like a square. When creating a more complex shape, children can move their feet apart to create an extra side. Playing with rubber bands and elastic helps children develop their understanding of shape and their properties. Good kinesthetic learning.